Uh, Josh Terry Gill. Two story. <laughs> when I was 19, I was studying English at the junior college in the very rough suburb of Thousand Oaks. I fancied myself uh, a bit of a writer and a rebel. Uh, in reality, I was probably a bit of a fuck up. The pinnacle of this phase is me stealing a golf cart and joyriding uh, until I was arrested by the police after a brief low speed pursuit. <laughs> true, true. Uh, I was given a year's probation in community service, and while I'm raking leaves in an orange vest, I meet Karen. Karen Johnson is beautiful, she's sensitive, she's an English major, and we fall in love. A month into this, she's transferring to UC Berkeley, and romantic at heart that I am, I go out and I steal flowers for her. Pardon me, I steal a dozen roses for her. And I'm immediately arrested in the parking lot. <laughs> and I stand tall before the same judge, and he gives me 10 days in the Ventura County Jail. He says this like it's the title of a fucking Johnny Cash song. And I'm thinking, fuck it, man. You know, I'm a literary outlaw, and this is great material, and I'm doing time for love. <laughs> Two days later, my mother drives me to jail in our 1971 Ford Pinto. She's chain-smoking Merit 100s and telling me how disappointed she is. The reality sinks in when I in process. They are fucking yelling at me to strip, to shower, uh, to lift your sack for the de-lousing. They yell at me to grab my cheeks and bend forward. And while the man is shining a flashlight up into my nether regions, I think, why didn't I just buy the roses? <laughs> so I'm walking small onto the pot, and I gotta tell you about the population, sure. There's a smattering of foragers and, and pornographers and deadbeat dads and the new fish me. But the jail is divided into two large factions. Sitting down on the left are the Latino gangsters, and on the right are the redneck bikers. And to the cat calls and the whistles of new fish, I tiptoe up to my cell, the fear is immense. The longing for Karen, who's going to leave in seven days, whom I won't get to say goodbye to, is overwhelming. And I pour it into a poem titled, Love Letter from Ventura Jail. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. In the morning, I mail the letter. And I go to breakfast. And, my, and I get up, and I leave my apple in my cell. He says, grab the apple. And he tells me that currency in jail are things like razor blades and toothpaste and apples and fruit cups. And I get it. On the way back to the cell, I happen to make eye contact with Sleepy Avato, and he stands up and goes, the fuck you looking at? Show me your keys! I'm baffled, I'm terrified, and he says, I'm gonna beat your ass. Flee up to the cell, and my, my cellie explains, direct eye contact is a challenge. Show me your keys means, who do you know? Who's backing you here? He tells me that I've got to fight. Okay, I've got to fight this guy or everyone's going to be all over me for the next 10 days. And I'm thinking about honor and dignity and respect and I hide in my cell at lunch. But he comes back and he says, you got a free pass, dude. Sleepy cut himself, he's in the hospital for seven days. I'm thinking, what, he was making a shiv out of a toothbrush? I don't know. I'm walking tall, I go down into the pod and I see a biker. And he is looming up head above all his henchmen at a table. He's got a chessboard in front of him. He's got Weissmacht tattooed on his clavicle, which means white pride. I pay an apple, I sit down and I play chess. And I'm thinking, hey, I'm a man of letters. You know, I'm gonna beat the cons and get some street cred. His fucking chess game takes my chess game out to the yard and stabs it repeatedly in the heart. I stand up, I stand up humbled and he says, Want to buy a poem? <laughs> and I look at the poem, and I see my work, but the lines have been changed, and where it read, we'll be together, though I won't walk with you. It says, we'll get so fucking high, and then we'll fuck too. <laughs> and I say, I wrote this. And he goes, you're the guy, and I'm the guy. Just then, my celly cuts in with a bag full of apples and three pudding cups. <laughs> Dan, the fucking head of the Aryan Brotherhood in the Ventura County Jail, drops an apple into the bag. And he looks at me with respect. <laughs> I have a friend. I have a protector. And I ask him, what the fuck do I do about sleeping? And he says, maintain your kick. Fucking crap. He says, you get a three-day kick, man. Good behavior. 
They shave your sentence, they kick you out three days early. Three day kick saved my life because seven and three is 10. I'm gonna see Karen before she leaves. Later that night, I'm coming down to dinner and I'm late. And I walk down the stairs into the pod and everything is silent. All eyes are on me. I see little Sleepy with his vatos. He's come back. He's stone faced. And I look to the right and I see Big Dan. And he's at a table with his henchmen to either side. It's like the little Mozart. And he, he's at a table. It's like the last fucking supper. He's minions to either side. And with an up nod of the chin, he calls me over to an empty seat. And I sit down at the right hand of my jailhouse savior. <laughs> and he leans in. Be cool. Sleepy wants to talk. And I'm shaking, which he takes for a nod. <laughs> he nods. Sleepy comes over in front of the table, like he's registering for something. And he says, I heard about your poem. My Ruka walked out on me. Could you write me a poem to get her back? And I'm thinking, how many fucking apples is this thing worth? <laughs> But it's an olive branch. I take it. I write a vulgar poem for little Sleepy's Ruka. I get the three-day kick, and as Mom and I are driving up the Camarillo grade, she hands me a letter in complete silence, and I know before I open it, the Karen is through with me. And a year later, I'm at UC Berkeley studying, and I run into Karen, and we talk about the breakup. And she says, it wasn't so much that you went to jail for stealing flowers, it was the bad poetry. 